Hello friends, welcome back to the channel Neeru's Escapades. This is the part 2 of my favorite feel good movies. In case if you missed my part 1, I have attached the link in the top right corner of this video and in the description box below. I will not be adding any scenes in this video because of the copyright claim. So it's just a few lines about the movie. Here it goes. Number 6 on my list is The Terminal. This movie is partially inspired from a true story of how a man stayed in an airport terminal for 18 years. It seems unbelievable, but in this comedy drama, the protagonist gets stuck in an airport terminal for 9 months. This man happens to be an Eastern European who does not speak English. He flies to New York for a personal work, but when he is in the air, his country's government is overthrown in a civil war, making his country an invalid nation. So as a result, his passport also becomes invalid. He is denied an entry into the United States and at the same time is unable to return to his home. Now he has no choice but to make the terminal his home. While watching the movie, I asked to myself, how can you keep the audience engaged throughout the movie when it is entirely based in one location? But you would be surprised because the movie is thoroughly enjoyable with so much humor and heartfelt moments. Uh, how he survives in the terminal and how he contributes to the life of the people he meets in the airport is all this movie is about. It was amazing to see an entire movie that happens in the airport making us both laugh and cry. Although some scenes might seem unrealistic, the compassionate side of the protagonist overpowers the movie. So when he finally gets to leave the airport, you end up feeling very happy for him. This movie was directed by Steven Spielberg with Tom Hanks in the lead role and it was shot, entirely shot in a set built in a massive hangar at a regional airport in California. It is one of those movies uh, to go back to, uh, to feel good about the world. So you watch this movie and let me know how you like it. Number 7 on my list is The Help. This is a period drama which is set in the year 1963 in a village called Jackson in Mississippi, US. In the 1960s, back in the US, uh, the black maids working for the white people were referred to as the help and hence the name. So the story begins with one of the black maids narrating her experience working with the white people. And it was never pleasant because of the racism they are faced with. And on top of that, there is racial segregation, which is not just uh, the systematic separation of people into ethnic groups, but also the mandatory use of separate institutions like uh, schools, colleges, churches, and facilities like um, parks, restaurants, and restrooms. The way that they have shown this in this movie can certainly make you feel bad. But in the same village, uh, a young white woman who is an aspiring journalist decides to write a book from the point of the view of the help exposing the racism they face it was during the same time civil rights movements by african americans was happening in the u.s to end racial discrimination and racial segregation so when this young woman approaches the black man, they refuse to share their stories they refuse to talk about it because uh, they fear losing their jobs or something even worse happening. But when they see a civil rights activist getting assassinated, they start to share their stories. But under one condition, which is not to use their original names in the book. After collecting so many stories from black maids in the Jackson village, the book gets published anonymously. This movie has impacted me in many ways that I actually found it very disheartening to see the unfair treatment the black people received. And now, even after all these years, we still live in a world where racism exists. And what happened to George Floyd was yet another example. Coming to the movie, the thing I liked most about this movie is that they did not portray all white women as racists. Plus. The movie ended on a good note. I mean, something real good happening to the uh, black people. Uh, if not a big change in the treatment they receive, it's something to look forward to. This movie is appealing, entertaining and very, very touching. It's one of those movies that can make you laugh and break your heart. This is a must watch, guys. It's a must watch in this list. 
So watch this movie and let me know how you like it. Number eight on my list is Set It Up. This is a romantic comedy. So I was actually making a list of both serious as well as some comedy movies in this list. So this falls under comedy, romantic comedy. This movie uh, revolves around four people in a corporate world. Two overworking, exhausted assistants of two different bosses uh, who work in the same building meet each other. They casually chat and express their feelings about how working with their bosses have made their lives super busy. Realizing that they do not have time for their personal lives, they try to get their bosses together. So this idea of uh, making two people fall for each other has worked really well in many comedy movies. So in this movie, there's fresh drama, fresh romance and uh, so many laugh out loud moments. Um, so they come up with ideas after ideas to hook them up, uh, hoping that they would get uh, some time for themselves. During the course, they both fall for each other. Even with a very predictable storyline, this movie entertains us to the very end. So watch this movie and let me know how you like it. Number nine on my list is The Intern. After retirement, a 70-year-old widower named Ben does all things to keep himself occupied like golf, books, movies, traveling, etc. But he has that feeling, he has that void that something is missing and he constantly keeps looking to fill that void. One day he sees a flyer that says, seniors be an intern. He was a bit surprised because nobody recruits a senior uh, in an internship program. But all he wanted was a place to go to every day and find a new purpose in his life. So he applies to the senior internship program and gets selected. He has been given the role of being an intern to the company's CEO, Jules Austin, who is a young, hardworking woman. At first, Jules Austin is not very impressed by this senior internship program. So she is not giving any work to him. There is a table in the office which is always clumsy and nasty because every discarded uh, fires or materials are put up on the table. Now Jules always had an eye on the table. I think she uh, wanted someone to clean it but nobody ever did. Every day when she goes to the office, she looks at the table and feels bad about it. I think eventually she would have done it but Ben cleans that table and impresses everyone in the office, including Jules. The CEO life has kept Jules very busy that she barely talks to anyone about her personal life. Not that she is willing to talk, but she was a very private person. However, she starts sharing things with Ben because she feels comfortable around him. Ben becomes so committed to her like uh, he has found a new purpose or something and always tries to do good by her. When Jules must make a biggest decision in her life, Ben helps her make the right one. He becomes her well-wisher and offers right advice at the right time. They become really good friends. This movie has many funny and feel-good moments. And for the women out there who have huge dreams and want to succeed big in life, you can get inspired from watching this movie. Number 10 on my list is The Green Book. This movie is also inspired from a true story of a concert tour of a jazz pianist and his driver set in the year 1960s. Jazz pianist is an African-American named Don Shirley who recruits an Italian-American named Tony as his driver for his concert tour. Now, like I said before, in the 1960s, African-Americans were still fighting to end the racial discrimination and segregation. So a uh, black man, sorry, a uh, white man driving for a black man was quite unusual for the viewers. A green book is given to Tony, uh, which has a list of the motels and restaurants that serve the black people. Initially, Don and Tony do not get along. While Don is disgusted by Tony's habits, Tony feels uncomfortable when he's asked to behave well, which is totally not him. When Don is off stage, he is not being treated well by the public uh, and Tony is horrified by this uh, treatment that Don receives. Multiple incidents occur that involves racism and when one such incident goes beyond control, Tony rescues Don. After this incident, Tony is always with Don 
throughout the concert tour making making sure that he is safe and after that they slowly start to get along really well and help each other during this course they put aside their indifferences in opinion race religion and became good friends it is said that the real don and tony remained good friends until they died in the year 2013 extraordinary performances from the lead actors and in a world where racism still exists this kind of movie can uh, inspire people to treat everyone equally and do not forget that this movie has won 3 awards in the 91st academy awards including the best picture if you like my movie recommendations please share this video with your friends do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever i drop in a new video also i'm open to suggestions on kind of contents to post in this channel so feel free to leave your suggestions in the comment section below until the next video it's me neeraja signing off